Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to use Outlook 365 to create an academic calendar. Okay, so I'm probably going to have students in a couple of classes do this, and um, basically we want to just be organized with all of the various due dates and key dates for our spring term, or for any term for that matter. Now I'm in my calendar in Outlook 365 right now, you know, a little calendar button down there, lower left corner, and I'm going to add a calendar create a blank calendar and doesn't really matter. Ooh, there's a little graduation cap. I'll put a little graduation cap on there for the date. I'm going to call this my, uh, no, I'll just call it academic calendar. Could be spring, but you could do it for next fall or winter. doesn't matter. Save. Close. Cool. So now I have this academic calendar. I'm going to uncheck my default calendar, make sure the only calendar active is the calendar I want to work on right now. And let's see, I'm on March 29th. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to create an event and I'm just going to click right up there on March 29th. Let me show you that again. I'm clicking up in this white area just above the time zone because this is going to be an all day event. This is going to be the uh, start of spring term and that's March 29th and it's an all day one day event, that's cool. I am gonna click on more options though, and I wanna make sure that my time is listed as free. It is. I don't want these kinds of all day event reminders where I'm not active on it. I don't want it to be marked as busy or tentative or something like that. So it's good, it's defaulted to free. I'm happy with that. Not worried about a repeat. Now, do you want a reminder? That seems, that seems pretty cool. Reminder, the day before at 5 p.m. Looks like they give us some choices there. Day before at 9 a.m. Yeah, I'll do that one. All right, I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save, and that one's down there. Now we need some recurring events. So this is where you're going to go through all of the syllabi for your courses. Look at all the assignment quizzes, exam due dates, all of that stuff, and you're going to populate them. I'll help you out with a few that I would use for my class. So let's see. And I'm going to do these as all day events, even though some of these are due like at 11, you know, like my stuff is due at 11.59 p.m. I don't want to put that on the calendar way down there at 11.59 p.m. because I'm not as likely to see it. Instead, I'm going to go to my all day event up here. Uh, so the first Thursday of the term, and I'm going to put in something like CIS 120 participation due. Actually, I'll put the word due right in front of it. There we go. It's going to be an all day event and I'm going to assume it's going to default to free, which is good. However, I do need to go to more options because I want this to recur. So for my class, for that 120 class, it is going to repeat every week and we're going to stop it. Let's see. So spring term ends. I want to say it's right around here. So June 7th through 11th, I'm pretty sure is finals week. I'll have to confirm that pretty soon. So I think the last one is going to be right up here. So I'm just going to click on June 5th. Okay, repeats every Thursday. Click Save. Looks good. You could change colors if you want, stuff like that. I'm going to hit Save. And there we go. So I got that do CIS 120 participation. And I'll see if as I advance through the weeks, I see that's going to be on every week. I like it. Cool, and you can have multiple things. Now for, let's see, let me just click in the blank white area again, and you could do something like do um, writing 121 journal. I have no idea if that's what they do, but let, let's pretend that they do. More options, and I will repeat this one also every week, and we will stop it around June 5th, and save and save cool so we can kind of see at a glance what is coming up that day and if you're looking at a weekly view and stuff you can see coming up oh we got some stuff due. i'm going to do one more here and i'm going to go ahead and jump over to saturday because that's when my quizzes are due and we'll put in do cis yeah do a different class uh, i'll do my cis 178 quiz all right let's do that one more options repeat every week 
It is going to be on Saturdays. That's cool. And it's going to uh, go all the way to June 5th. And then I'm going to click Save. Could pick a different color if you want, you know. Quiz is worth more points and participation. You could do color codes based on class. You know, I could just say, that's kind of an interesting way to go. So if you get your different classes, I kind of like that. Use a method that seems good for you. I'll put this one down. This is, uh, I'll just put that as my red category. Day before at 5 p.m. Yeah, I, I like that still. And I'm gonna click Save. And I've got some other events up there. So it's pretty easy to do. Now, in addition to having our, obviously the start of the term and all the assignment due dates and all of your classes, all the activity due dates, you can also put in some other key events. I'm glancing over here at a calendar that I have off to the side. And for instance, May 31st, Memorial Day, um, college is closed. Huh, what day of the week is May 31st on? Huh, May 31st is a Monday, and I teach a Monday class, which means that class is not going to have a session that day. So let's plug that in. Once again, all-day event, and this is going to be Memorial Day. And I'll put a little note here. College closed. Okay, it's going to be an all-day event. Once again, you could have a different color, by the way. You could go to More Options and put a different color for holidays. Click Save. Excellent. That's on there. And of course, if your class session is, happens to be listed on there, you could take that away. Your academic calendar could also use specific events. Let's take care of that real quick. Start a spring term, and I'm going to jump over here. CIS 195, Web Dev, 1015, to something like 12:30 p.m. Cool. More options. It's going to repeat on a weekly basis on Mondays, and it's going to go to about June 5th or so. Save. Remind me 15 minutes before. Yep, that's fine. I'll do that. And yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and click Save here. All right, so now I've got that event. But now, let me advance ahead to May 31st on that Memorial Day. I want to delete this particular event without affecting all of the other events. Hey, where's my, uh... oh, that gets into June 7th. Uh, so that's going to be finals week. So, oh, that's our last class. That's a bummer. All right, well, probably do something. I'll probably record a class. I don't want us just to miss our last class like that. Okay, so if I want to delete this one without affecting all the others, I can click on it, and there is going to be an option to delete. And notice it's an option to delete this event, this and all following events, assuming we had some, or all events in the series. I'm going to delete just that event. Delete. Okay. However, I want you to uh, remember for my class for that Memorial Day, we're going to do something. We're not going to miss the last class of the term. We'll do a maybe a demo class or something uh, the following day or in the evening. Okay, so there we go. Now, what's nice about this is this academic calendar is one of the maybe several calendars you're going to have in your Outlook system. So I can turn my main calendar back on. And all of those events are going to show up for my main calendar. Plus, I'm going to have all of my academic stuff that I want to keep track of, whether it's a class session. So let me jump back over here. Oh, there it is. See, now you can see I've got my class session in there mixed in with, I had already booked it in another calendar. And I can turn off the academic calendar if I want to hide some of that stuff, turn it back on, or turn off the main calendar if I want to focus just on the academic stuff. So there we go. Create yourself an academic calendar just for school-related stuff. Class meetings, college events, activity due dates. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hey, it's Ralph again. Um, I took a few minutes just to populate the rest of my calendar here, so I just wanted to show you what an end result might look like. So I chose to make college events, key events red, and then just my uh, class or class activities and stuff. And those are the default blue, but I did change the little icon there. So when I get into a normal week, I can start to see over several days where different class items are due. That'll be nice and clear. I'll see what's coming up over the next day or two and stuff like that. And let me jump ahead a little bit, and then we'll get to a place where the drop deadline. So for big college deadlines, those are also red. Got that plugged in there. 
And then there's also going to be things like multi-day events. So like finals week, I just have it as a multi-day event. Let me just show you what that looks like real quick. And basically I just have it start on like June 7th to June 11th, you know. So I just keyed in five days. It gave me the end date there. And that was pretty easy to do. And so uh, even though it's finals week, I've got, uh, there's, you know, assignment due on that Monday of finals week. And then there's the final exams for those individual classes. Don't forget, each class might have its own final exam. Sometimes you'll have to go in for the exam and stuff. So plug those into the main body of the calendar. And then graduation commencement right there on Saturday the 12th. So, yeah, so there's my uh, academic calendar. I might add a few more events as things come up. And like I said, I do have the official key dates from the uh, school website. So maybe I'll plug a few more things in there. But uh, definitely go ahead and populate your academic calendar. Take care.